All right, Joe Appio here, and I'm joined with Principal Maria Corso, Leslie and Jane, and they're gonna tell us about what Lincrest School on Morlot Avenue is doing to save this planet. Principal Corso, tell us what you guys are doing. Okay, right now we have uh, encouraged kids to have an increased interest in science. We have built a deck on the eight acres of land adjacent to the Lindcrest School so that students go in now, they actually experience science firsthand. Uh, they become Thoreau-like, they can sit on the deck and they can do writing, and they don't feel like they're in Lindcrest. They feel like they're in the middle of a, of a forest and we're hoping to inspire them so we have uh, future scientists who are looking to keep the earth green. Well, speaking of inspirations, we have Leslie here who seems to have been inspired. Tell us about what you're doing as part of the uh, uh, school team here. We have created an environmental club at Lincrest School for our fourth and fifth graders. And through the environmental club, we have helped clean up the, um, sit the deck outside. And we have sold light bulbs in order to um, conserve energy and to promote the kids in conserving energy. This week, today, we actually just had a walkathon again. And we raised $1,300 for the school and in addition to that we sold these t-shirts and these water bottles and made another three hundred dollars to put towards cleaning up the school and getting technology into our science activity center. You're doing it yourself and making the changes. Absolutely and we want to teach the children that in doing this they give back and we incorporated it with our character ed program that good citizens not only care about each other, but they care about the world in which they live and they're leaving for future generations. I'm joined by Glenn from BP Solar, and Glenn is going to tell us all the fine works they're doing in southern and now northern New Jersey. Right. We, uh, the green energy people, are uh, in business for about 15 months, right. and we decided to open an office up in North Jersey because it's very slim up here. We're, there's not much in the way of solar What's panels. What's the goal, Glenn? What is the goal here? The goal here is to get 20% of New Jersey covered with uh, renewable energy. Okay, I've looked into it. Now, the major fear is, yes, you get tax breaks, but the initial cost is so steep that in this climate, it's difficult for folks. What, what message did you have to say to people in this, in this uh, environment, in this climate? Well, if you want to keep renting your electricity, that's fine. But the money you save on your electricity, you can put that towards a loan. And instead of renting electricity, you're buying it now. And just within a few years, you can actually pay off these systems with the rebates, incentives, and the SRECs, which are solar renewable energy certificates, which people don't necessarily know about right now. All right, so tell me, so an average home here in Fairlawn we're smaller homes, capes and such, maybe 50 by 100. What would that cost to power up that home? Uh, between 30 and $50,000. But the return could be actually within four to five years, total return on your investment. And uh, you're paid for your electric for the next 15 years. And would you say that has an increased value on your home? Absolutely. Uh, the numbers are 20 times production. Okay, Joe Appio here with Fairlawn's Mayor, Joe Tedeschi. Joe, tell us about the Green Fair and all the wonderful things that you're doing to promote green living in Fairlawn. Well, the, the real credit goes to the Fairlawn Environmental Commission, Wendy Dabney, uh, and some other people on that commission who have worked very hard to bring all of these people together. I'm just so thrilled that so many people are here. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I expected well, five I'm booths. I'm happily amazed because I'm seeing young people, I'm seeing kids, I'm seeing people doing and getting involved. And they're enthusiastic as well. And it's fun. It's fun and they're enjoying it. We have to find ways to keep the momentum going though because there's a lot of issues as you walk around this room. There's a lot of issues that directly affect Fair Lawn mm -hmm. from, from Daly Field to the Westmoreland Wells to the things that are going on. We have to make sure we pay attention to those things. I mean, during your administration, what's one green project that you would love to see at least get started? Preserving Daly Field. That's our number one goal right now. And acquiring some open space in other areas of town. Because once open space is gone, it's gone. I'm with Larry, Felice, and Amy. And, Amy. and they're part of the Fairlawn Historic Preservation Commission. And they're going to tell us what they're doing to preserve places like the Cadmus House, the Noggle House, and what else are we saving? And Garrison Forge. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what sites we have here in town. 
I usually start down at the Saddle River. We've got the Norgal House, which is endangered. And hopefully the, the grant that we're applying for will come through. All right, well, with these projects, obviously a lot of money is needed. Right. First oh. you must acquire the, the properties exactly. and then develop them. So tell us what you're doing to, to raise money and uh, do some fundraising. Well, we're hoping to get these grants through the county and uh, that, that the town would match and then we'd be able to purchase the first property. In okay. And Felice's husband, Larry, is also part of this uh, commission. Larry, tell us what your passion is with this, with preserving the past. Well, the whole thing about it is you don't know what you have to preserve until you get to learn about it. So we make an effort to educate everybody in many resources that we have that are historic in Fairland. We have a tremendous amount of things that are very important that people don't even realize. You have a national historic landmark, a community called Radburn. You have a house, uh, the Noggle House, where Lafayette used to come. You have a fish weir that is prehistoric where the Indians used to fish. There's maybe only two of those left in the entire Northeast that we know of. In other words, People are learning what we have here in Fairlawn that's important and historic. And that's the way you preserve it. When people understand and appreciate what they have, then they want to keep it. And to keep the beautiful examples of the past that we, and how people used to live. Well, absolutely, Larry. I mean, this is something that you're saving for future generations. And they will, they will forever be in your debt for doing this right. for And you. once you lose these things, you don't get them back. Oh, that's it. That's yeah. the thing you have to realize. Flapio here with Nick Vosween. He's one of the Hackensack River Keepers. And Nick, what are you doing to keep Hackensack River clean? Well, we do a lot of different things. Uh, our main mission is to protect, preserve, and restore the river. Uh, we do a lot of educational programs where we take people out to see the state of the Hackensack River, see what condition it's in and how much it's improved over the past 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have an attorney on staff, so we work with the state and the attorney general's office to sue polluters and actually clean up the Hackensack River that way. We also have a lot of volunteer programs where we take people out. Uh, volunteers come out and do river cleanups okay. with us. Uh, and then we go into schools and we do a lot of education programs with not just school students, but also adult students where we teach them about the river and about how they can help contribute to cleaning up the river through, you know, proper landscaping and reducing non-point source pollution, all those things. And tell me about the improvements that have happened since you guys have been on the watch. Well, in the past 15 to 20 years, the number of fish and the diversity of fish species that are found in the river has increased tremendously. Um, the water quality used to be pretty poor where there would only be a few species of fish that could survive there, and now there's over 65 species of fish that live in the lower Hackensack River, and we're also working to restore oysters to the lower part of the Hackensack River. That's wonderful. Yep. That's wonderful. And is the rumor true that they might soon be Hackensack H2O, bottled water? Well, Hackensack River is a really important water supply. The upper half of the river is already used as drinking water for over a million people in eastern Bergen and northern Hudson County.